So we will see here why India has adopted the first pass the post system. The answer is not very difficult to guess. If you have carefully read the box explaining the Rajya Sabha election, you would have noticed that first thing that uh, it is very complicated. Complicated what? Proportional representation system. So these are the merits of first pass post system. Merits of first pass post system will become demerits of proportional representation and vice versa f p t p okay this will be useful to all you students in mains if you will see that proportional representation is having the merit that is it is very complicated then first pass the post system is very simple to understand so this is how we will be continuing ahead now we are seeing the advantages of first pass post system because of which india has adopted it so first we'll see that uh, elections of Rajya Sabha here you will see this elections of Rajya Sabha are very complicated so this will work in a small country which is very educated but it will be very difficult in a subcontinental country like India which is having a population of more than 120 crore so the reason for the popularity and success of the FPTP in India is its simplicity is it simplicity so first difference you will see that this f p t p is simple while p r proportional representation is very complicated hence you will see that in india the entire election system is very simple for common voters because of having the large uh, amount of illiteracy in India, it is difficult for the common voters to understand the complex system like proportional representation. So, you will see that the entire election system in India is very simple to understand from the common voters point of view and it requires no specialized, it required no specialized knowledge about the politics and election. So, that was the first reason why India adopted the first pass the post system. Now we'll see the second reason that there is a clear choice presented to the voters at the time of elections. In first pass the post system, the voters will choose candidate or party while voting. Depending on the nature of actual politics, voter may give either greater importance to party or candidate or they can election, uh, they can balance both. If they like the party, they will not give much weightage to the candidate. If they like the candidate, they can ignore the party. So this kind of flexibility is available in first pass the post system. Okay. So the choice in first pass the post system is not simply between parties, but candidates. While in other electoral systems like PR, proportional representation systems, voters have to choose a party. Representatives are later elected on the basis of party list. So this is the another advantage of first pass the post system because of which India adopted it. Then we will see as a result there is no one representative who represents and is responsible for one locality. This is in PR. But as far as first pass the post system is concerned, voters know who are their representatives and they hold them accountable. It is because of one constituency will be represented by one MP. So in this constituency, if work is not going on properly, this MP can be held accountable. But this kind of advantage is not available in PR, proportional representation. Because of these advantages, India has adopted first pass the post system. So, you will see another advantage of first pass post system because of which India has adopted is that proportional representation may not able to provide a stable government, especially in a parliamentary system because in parliamentary system of executive, executive will stay in office as far as it is staying in the majority in the legislature. But 
proportional representation system might not represent such clear majority. So, seats are always divided on the party on the basis of votes polled by the party. But in first past the post system, but in the first past the post system, you will see that this system generally gives largest party or coalition some extra bonus seats more than the share of votes. It is because of this system, a political party can have a majority and executive will stay in the office for the complete term of five years and this is beneficial in wherever there is a parliamentary form of government and we have seen earlier the example of the congress party in 1984 election where it won less than 50 percent of the votes but yet it won more than 80 percent of the seats so this kind of ftp P can provide stable government and since it can provide stable government, India has adopted first past the post system. Finally, the fifth advantage is that in first past the post system, voters from the different social groups can come together to win an election in a locality. In a diverse country like India, if we would have proportional representation, then every community based on caste and religion will form their own nationwide party and there will be identity based politics and every voter will vote party of his own caste or own religion this would have divisive tendencies in india but this is not in first past the post system and that's why our constitutional framers has adopted first past the post system as a method of election in lok sabha now having seen the advantages of the first past the post system we'll see how India had an experience with the first past post system. So first we have seen that this system is very simple, is familiar to the ordinary voters and also it has helped larger parties to win clear majorities at the both center and state level. However, the system has discouraged political parties. This system has discouraged political parties Two, that they votes only from one caste or community. They do not get votes only from the one caste and community unlike in PR. So, normally you have seen that wherever there is FPTP, there is two party system. But in India, it is very different. India adopted FTPT and after independence, there was dominance of one party. But after 1989, India is seeing the multi-party coalition. So, generally FTPT will have two party system, but India has multi party system. So, this is the Indian experience of first past the post six system. But the distinguishing feature of Indian party system is coalitions. Okay. And whenever there are coalitions, newer, smaller parties will have space or presence in the electoral competition in spite of FPTP. Okay. So, this was all about the method of election adopted in India, advantages and the Indian experience with a particular method of election. Now, we will see how seats are reserved in the constituency. So, the reservation can be of two types, separate electorate and reserved seat. So, this separate electorate was introduced even before independence by Britishers. So, what happens in separate electorate? Do any of you students have any kind of idea what happens in the separate electorate? Just think over it for a minute and then we'll move ahead. That in separate electorate, you will see here we'll discuss two things separate electorate versus reserved constituency. So, in this separate electorate, electing a representative from a political community. Only those voters will be eligible to vote who belong to the particular community. This happens in separate electorate. I'll explain again. Whenever there is separate electorate, a candidate from particular community can only stand for election and voters of that community only are eligible to vote. 
to that particular candidate. Okay, for example, this is a constituency. So in this constituency, out of 100 voters, 20 and 80, this 80 voters belong to community A. So the member from this particular community will stand in the election and only these people will vote him. This kind of election system, a method of election system is called separate electorate. Now we will see reserved constituencies. In compared to separate electorates, you will find that in reserved constituencies, all voters, they are eligible to vote and the candidate should belong to a particular community. But in separate electorates, you will see only the voters belonging to that community are eligible to vote. So this is the difference between these two systems. In separate electorates, only voters of particular community, they are eligible to vote, but in reserved constituency, all voters will vote. In, in both the uh, system, only the candidate from a particular community will stand for the elections. So this is how this is the difference between two different system. Now we'll see that in India, there are certain social groups who has been provided reservation or reserved seats. So constitution of India has provided reservation of seats in Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly to two communities, Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes. This reservation is for 10 years, but it has been extended up to 2020. So out of 543 elected seats in Lok Sabha, 84 has been elected for Scheduled Caste and 47 has been elected for Scheduled Tribes. So this was all about the reservation of seats. Now we'll see the delimitation commission. What are the functions of delimitation commission? Now, who will decide that a particular community is reserved? And on what basis this decision will be taken? This decision is always taken by an independent body and this independent body is called delimitation commission. In India, Delimitation Commission is appointed by President of India and it works in collaboration of Election Commission of India. So, what is the aim of this body? Its aim is to draw boundaries of constituencies all over the country. Now, you will see that the quota of constituencies for ST and ST is fixed. So, after drawing the boundaries, delimitation commission will check the composition of a particular com constituency. In that constituency, how much proportion is of ST and SC? If it will find that the highest proportion is for, of the ST tribe, then delimitation commission will reserve that seat for ST community. In case of scheduled caste, delimitation commission will see two things whether they have higher proportion of population and it will also see whether it is spread in the different regions of the state why this is done because scheduled caste population is generally evenly spread throughout the country so this reserved seats are rotated regularly so that the people sc people from all the different communities can have their representation because of delimitation. Now, Constitution of India also makes reservation for other disadvantages groups. That is women. Women in India have reservation in local government, but not in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So this we will see in the electoral reforms that there should be reservation for women in Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Now we will see what do you mean by free and fair elections. 
and how they are important free and fair elections so if you want to test any election system of the world you can test whether it is able to ensure free and fair electoral process if it is able to process then electoral system is very strong in case of india you will see to have free and fair election first you should have universal franchise so what do you mean by universal franchise when all the adult population of the country they are eligible to vote in election this is called universal adult franchise so in universal adult franchise all the adult population will have right to vote till 1980 this fact is important from prelims point of view till 1989 what was the minimum age required to vote 21 so all the people who are above the age of 21 are eligible to vote but after 1989 this was reduced to the age of 18 so in other words adult franchise ensures that all citizens who are adult they are able to participate in elections all the able population is able to participate in election then you will see that there are sometimes criticism that in able to vote certain educational qualifications should have been there but our constitutional framers had a firm belief that this kind of minimum educational qualification for voting is not required because all citizens are equal and whether they are educated or not they are able to decide what is good for the society it is for this reason no education qualification has been kept as a prerequisite to vote in election okay then you will see that right to contest which citizens can contest in election so in india all citizens have right to contest in election as they have all the citizens have right to vote only the eligibility criteria that in case of lok sabha a candidate should be more than 25 years of age so this kind of certain uh, uh, eligibility is there also if a person has gone imprisonment for more than 2 years he will be disqualified from contesting election if a person has went to jail or he has been convicted in some offense and he has been into imprisonment for the 2 years he cannot stand in the election of mp or mla now we'll before moving to this we'll see that independent election commission independent election commission now we'll study this topic independent election commission in india it is eci election commission of india we will study about election commission of india so you will see that this article 324 is related to election commission of india article 324 is related to election commission of india according to this article article 324 there shall be election commission and it will be responsible for superintendence direction and control of the electoral roll and conduct of election of india so it will do supervision it will provide direction and it will control complete election process in india it will prepare the electoral roll which has names of all the uh voters then it will also conduct the election so this is the article which is related to election commission of india now you will see that to assist election commission of india there are chief electoral officers at the level of state one more thing you should take into consideration that local body election is done by state election commission and not by ECI election commission of india does not conduct the local bodies election 
as far as its composition is concerned composition of election commission earlier it was single member but after the controversy of pn session it became multi member and how it is all here so i would suggest you all students to read about tn session it was because of his tenure election commission became a multi member body so kindly go through internet and read about tn session now we have seen that election commission will consist of election commissioner that is chief election commissioner and two other election other commissioners so election commission of india will consist of cec chief election commissioner and other election commissioners but this chief election commissioner will preside over the election commission but he does not have more powers than other election commissioners the two other election commissioners will have equal power and all decisions will be taken as a collective body they all are appointed by the president of india so the ruling party can appoint a partisan person so this is one of the criticism relating to election commission of india but there is a another provision we will see later that during removal how the same party cannot remove it so there is suggestions that while appointing them there should be consultation with the chief justice of india and leader of opposition so that the ruling party this ruling party cannot appoint their own person as an election commissioner which can help them in election and reduce the chances of fair elections in india now you will see that this constitution of india ensures security of tenure for these people that is either 6 years or 65 of age whichever is earlier they will go and whenever they are removed before the expiry of their term whenever they are removed before the expiry of term they will need special majority so what do you mean by special majority whenever any bill is passed by special majority special majority means 2/3 of present and voting and simple majority of the total membership of house this means more than 50% so example if the total membership of house is 100 then 50% of 100 and present and voting in a particular meeting 90 people has came then half of 90 is 45 here you will require 46 so this is all about special majority so you will see whenever chief election commissioner or other election commissioners are removed then they will be removed by president when both the houses of parliament will recommendation will do recommendation with special majority and this is not very easy so even if the ruling party will favor any person and appoint him either as cec or other ec he cannot be removed by the another party because for removal they require a parliamentary majority special majority okay so we will see now the functions of election commission of india so first you see that ruling party cannot remove election commission and election commissioners can be removed by president of india 